Hey there, Bible buddies. I've got another Bible review for you today, and this is another authorized King James Version Bible produced by James Pott and Company for Cambridge University Press. Now, this particular model is a sapphire, and it's done in a black French Morocco leather. So we'll go ahead and take a look at it. You can see this nice grain. It's definitely uh, unique in the sense that it's more of a uh, more of a matte finish to this leather. Most leathers of this era were kind of shiny uh, or shinier for whatever reason, um, but this one's definitely like a matte finish. Now, I'm not sure if it's just dried out over the years or that's how it was produced. Uh, when it was new, but we'll take a look. It does have kind of a nice yap here, a semi yap. Doesn't go all the way, uh, but you can see this nice leather here. And it does have a perimeter line around the book block. There is no perimeter line on the edge, which is pretty unique because normally they have them on the edge and not on the book block. But um, this is kind of the opposite of that. Uh, you can also see here that it's pretty, pretty well worn and torn. Um, so uh, yeah, just to see uh, the Bibles I've been reviewing lately have been pretty beat up. Uh, not all of my Bibles are in immaculate condition, um, but I do tend to look for at least ones that have a really nice text block, and this one is no exception. So we'll, we'll look at the spine here. You can see that yap. Let's pull it up just a little bit here. <laughs> Poor thing, it's all beat up. <laughs> then you have Holy Bible References, uh, Pronouncing, and then Teacher's Edition uh, in Cambridge at the bottom there. And there are um, five uh, spine ribs here, or indications. They're not really raised or anything. They're kind of pressed and burnished um, like we've been seeing lately, but they do look really nice. On the back there, you have the nice leather that continues with a nice grain there. Uh, and then the perimeter line around the book block and more tears. <laughs> uh, go ahead and take a look at the book block here. And you can see that there are white and head, white head and tail bands. And there is one blue ribbon. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, but there is a very nice gilt you can see there. And this particular edition is indexed. Uh, and it is a red under gold, which you can see is beautifully well done. I love the way that looks. Uh, and we'll look, it is a uh, concave book block ever so slightly concave, which I adore instead of a flat book block. We'll flip it over here and we'll see the ribbon. So funny enough, this book, this um, specific uh, model is called the Sapphire, and it does have kind of a dark blue ribbon here. Now, again, <laughs> these ribbons, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it must have been the, must have been the fad there uh, for this time period, but it is a very thin, very narrow, uh, almost threadbare kind of ribbon here. Um, very minuscule. Which is hilarious because it just looks like it's it's getting lost in this giant text block. So, uh, one interesting to note about this page indexing uh, is that it kind of goes both directions. So, let me see here if I can kind of open it up to the right spot. There we are. So it's like the first uh, up until Second Kings is this direction, and then the other the remainder of the Bible is the opposite direction. So just interesting to note. But we'll we'll take a look at those more as we get into the Bible. Um, yeah, the liners, um, it is a black paper paste down, um, really nothing too crazy about it. I'll show you the corner work there for whatever it's worth in this poor beat up old Bible with this busted corner. So you can see that it is stamped French Morocco there on the inside. Uh, now Bibles just, Bibles of this era, for some reason they had their leather sometimes stamped and it was really all over the place. Sometimes it's centered, sometimes it's here, sometimes it's on the back cover here, sometimes it's on the back cover here. Um, they're, they're really all over the place. The majority of the time they don't stamp. So, um, you know, if you, if you get it, if you get a stamped Bible, cool, you'll know kind of what the leather might be. Uh, there are the other corners <laughs> you can see here. That's a little torn up. I, I remember when I got this one, there was some kind of a glue or adhesive or something here, um, that was holding all of this together. Maybe, you know, during the production process, some glue kind of overflowed, or maybe this liner kind of came up and somebody home glued it themselves. Uh, the glue kind of overflowed and stuck to the pages, but I had to tear it apart. And, um, that was the, uh, the outcome of that. <laughs> so there's also a little tear here uh, at the top, and also uh, of note is that the pages um, or this liner is not reinforced. So um, you know you can expect it to tear over the years. Surprises held up so far given the condition of the uh, <laughs> condition of the cover. But let's go ahead and get into the text block. There is one thick end sheet there, and then you have one thicker uh, end sheet here, um, a blank one. And then you have the title page, uh, the Holy Bible containing the Old and New Testaments. And you can see there it does say New York, James Pott and Company. Uh, and you do have Sapphire 16 MO references and pronouncing down here. So it is a self, or, or not a self pronouncing text, but a, a text with pronunciation marks. Uh, and it was produced for the Cambridge University Press. I know over the years, uh, Cambridge kind of switched between, between printers for different models and that sort of thing. We'll move on. This is the Epistle Dedicatory. And then we have the table of contents. And we'll take a look here real quick at the index tab. It is marked Genesis. 
and it's a nice kind of like brass color with a sans serif font on it. Um, I've never understood how they do um, how they do book indexing. Um, I'll have to look that up one of these days and see if they how they actually like cut the pages uh, and then apply the little tabs. It's kind of interesting to me. Um, I don't prefer indexed uh, indexing. I used to like it for like my study Bibles, uh, but the more I read the Bible, the more I kind of just learn the books of the Bible. So um, I don't know. It's one of those things that I don't really prefer only because like um, you tend to kind of get these kind of these cut sections get caught on everything and they get folded up. Uh, and then after a while, these will kind of fall off. Um, so I don't really see a great benefit to having them. And then I have, I have a few Bibles where the, the cutting for the indexing goes so far that it cuts into the biblical text, which to me is a no, no. Um, cause you know, you're ruining the biblical text at that point for, uh, for indexing. Um, so just my two cents. Uh, and here's a table of signs, uh, table of signs that are used in the book. And then we have the first book of Moses called Genesis. Go ahead and get your close for that text. You do have some center column references, and this is a uh, double column verse by verse. I'll flip the page here so we can get a better feel for it. On the top corners, you have the book name, and then you have the chapters that are associated with page. You have running headers across the top of the page in the, in the gutter, and then you have the page numbers on the bottom center. And again, your um, center column references. And it does look like the center column references, they've attempted to kind of put them close to where they are uh, in the text instead of like bunching them all at the top, which is nice. I appreciate that. And it does use Pilgrim marks right there. You can see it. Uh, and you can kind of see a little bit of the print inconsistencies here. Uh, so this text up here looks a little darker and then it gets a little kind of lighter here, a little thinner here. Um, so just to note, I mean, I know the printing process wasn't totally perfected back then. Um, so it's to be expected with these vintage Bibles. So I always thought this was really neat. So on some Bibles, you'll see this. So here's an indicator 71. So what this indicates is that this is the 71st chapter of the entire Bible. Kind of cool. So you can see like how many chapters there are. Maybe we'll get to Revelation 22 and we'll, we'll see how many total chapters. See if it matches up with the general consensus. <laughs> uh, and here we'll take a look at these, um, the rest of the cutouts here for the indexing. And it does look like it's only one book per uh, tab. We'll take a look later on. The books get a little closer. It might not be the case, but for now at least. There's 1st and 2nd Samuel, so they might economize in some spots. And you can see that beautiful red under gold. I mean, this is really a fantastic um, quality-wise, the Bible. The red is nice and dark. Um, even even the little uh, indexing, I mean, I'm not like such a, such a huge fan of it always, but I think here it looks nice with the brass coloration, uh, especially for the fact that it's kind of patinaed a little bit, so it kind of tends to give it some of that uh, antique look. Uh, and the pages have oxidized ever so slightly, but it's nice in its uniform, so it gives them like a real nice... Um, kind of, you know, uh, just a uniform kind of yellowed appearance um, that would be consistent with an older Bible. It's very nice to me. I like it. Let's get over to the poetic books. I can use my handy, well, I'm already here in Psalms. Look at that. I was going to use the indexing, but I'm already here in Psalms. What's the point? Goodness. <laughs> uh, but again, this is a double column verse by verse, so there's no, there's no real um, formatting for uh, poetic books or anything like that. We'll get it nice and tight here with the paper. And you can see this is just another another beautiful example of this old paper. There's absolutely no show through, uh, especially given kind of how thick that font is that they used. It's just very nice paper, really, really nice paper. Something I wish they could bring back or maybe find some kind of newer formulation for it, be able to get it done. Or a blue, uh, blue ribbon there saying hello. All right, let's go to the New Testament title page right quick. So we have the end of the prophets. We have one blank sheet. We have the New Testament over Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I like that wording. I know that it's not really consistent um, between Bibles, but this is that's that's pretty nice. That's a nice little word. I like that. And I went a little too far. <laughs> I forgot uh, to show you guys that it's not a red letter. It is it is a black letter text. Um, I mean, you guys can probably tell just from flipping through here. It's a black letter text. So. Let's get to the end right quick. I'll check out Revelation. Ooh, yeah, we can use our tabs. So for Revelation 22, looky there. So you have 1,189 chapters in the Bible. So just an interesting thing to note. I'm not sure why, why they did that, but it's kind of cool that they did. Uh, you also have a production code here. A lot of times um, you'll see that the production codes for the book block are listed at the end of Revelation. 
So you can have, uh, you can see it says 10D25. Uh, again, I, I'm not too familiar with the exact specifics of these, so I don't know if this is printed in maybe 1925, uh, maybe the 10th printing in December. I, I don't know. Or maybe they printed, I don't know. I just don't know. I wish somebody could help me out. Help me out, guys. If you know any better, let me know. <laughs> and you can see this huge chunk of helps here at the end after the Bible. It's a good size of them. So here are the helps to study the Bible. Now, this did say that it was a... Uh, teacher's edition. So the teacher's edition, or you might see like SS um, teacher's edition. That isn't like the German SS. That's for Sunday school teachers editions. Uh, uh, so whenever you see uh, teacher's edition or SS edition or SS teacher's edition, uh, that just means that there's a, a good chunk, a good chunk of helps in the back, a nice sizable selection of helps. So we have helps to study the Bible. We have a glossary. Nice and small. Oop, and then after the glossary, it looks like we have an index there. So there's an index to proper names. And then you have, uh, well, just the index to proper names, excuse me. And then an index of subject, of sub, goodness, an index of subjects. There's quite a bit going on. Then there is a concordance. We can turn to that tab. So there's the concordance. You guys take a close look there. Pretty neat. This should be pretty sizable here. Go to after the concordance. Yeah, so that whole last remainder of that chunk was all concordance. You have one blank sheet, and then you have one page that's turning away from everything, <laughs> just trying to escape. Uh, and that is the maps and plans and the list of the names of the maps. This would be your gazetteer. Uh, or also an index to maps, boo, call it a gazetteer, call it what it is, gazetteer. Um, <laughs> I think I'm a little obsessed with that word. Uh, it just sounds so formal to me. And I love I love it whenever somebody takes a, a formal approach to the Bible. It, it, it's it's nice to kind of elevate the word of God uh, above like, like these are the maps, yo, that sort of thing. So we'll take a look at the maps here. These really old Cambridge maps. Very interesting. We'll kind of flip through them. Now this paper is a, it's a thicker paper uh, and it feels a little bit waxy. So maybe like an old school coated paper. But uh, yeah, let me get you close on this one. This, this is another set of maps. that's a, a little on the harder side to read just because of all the uh, cross hatching there and the, and the topography. It's kind of interesting to see how maps have come along over the years, you know, kind of what they focused on and what they gave importance to. Uh, you know, it almost seems like here the, the importance wasn't the areas listed, but more the, the terrain features. Like you're going to go out and <laughs> like you're going to go out with your uh, your Sapphire Bible here and uh, climb the mountains <laughs> by the Dead Sea and uh, try and find these spots based on uh, terrain features, I guess. I don't know. Um, but you never know. Maybe somebody did do it. I'm not going to I'm not going to fault anybody. Maybe it might have been done. Might have happened. So here you go. You have Unbreakable back, and it is patented, uh, March 8th, 1910. Uh, and then the number here says uh, K125, and there's a little LE off to the side. Uh, unbreakable back. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> there are a few signatures that are separated. Um, so I don't know if unbreakable back is 100% true. I can, I can show you right. There you, there you go. There's your unbreakable back. Um, but this is another construction, like I mentioned in another video I did. Uh, oh, no, JK, it's not. I thought it was for a second there. Um, but you can see here. The, uh, the kind of gap um, that you would normally have with modern Bibles instead of the cover being glued directly to the spine there. Uh, there's a little gap, um, like an Oxford hollow, as they call it. Uh, and that kind of helps. Uh, you can see it kind of creates a bend there, right? It kind of bends upwards. And that helps to get the gutter of the text. It kind of lifts it and pushes it out so it lays a little bit flatter here in these areas. Um, you can see here it lays nice and flat and it's nice and open uh, to kind of get the text onto the flatter portion of the page, which makes it nice and easy to read. So let's go ahead and get some measurements for you guys. I'll pull this open as far as we can. This measures in at about seven and five eighths of an inch tall by uh, just about five inches wide. And that's kind of a chunky guy, right an inch and a half thick. I'll look at the text. Uh, 
So we will pull a capital. What do we want? Pull the capital F here. This to be about about a seven and a half point uppercase in comparison to time, Times New Roman. We'll get the M and man. It's a little bigger for the lower cases. A good, a good bigger actually. About an eight and a half point lowercase font in comparison to Times New Roman. So overall, I would say it's about an eight and a half point text, um, which is a nice readable size, uh, especially given the the diminutive size of this Bible. It's good hand. I don't know. I never know. You know what? I, I'm going to stop using that term hand size and large and mid size. I don't know. What is this a hand size? I guess. You know, <laughs> it's close to my hand size. I got I got large hands. Large slash extra large. I'm running. I'm running between the two. Uh, so maybe a hand size for smaller people, for smaller folks. I'm a big guy, so um, I don't know. Hand size for some. <laughs> it's definitely not a pocket size. <laughs> um, that's all I can say. It's definitely not a full size. <laughs> it's definitely not a wide margin. I know what it's not. I just don't know what it is. Um, Bible buddies, uh, thank you for watching this review of this uh, Sapphire Bible. I really appreciate you guys coming here and checking out my videos. Um, I pray that you all would uh, find a Bible that suits you, whether it's a vintage Bible or a new Bible. Uh, and I pray that you would read those Bibles. Uh, that's what they're here for. Um, if you do get a vintage Bible and you enjoy vintage Bibles like myself, uh, awesome. Um, but even if it's a if it's a freebie from the Gideons, uh, awesome too. Uh, Bible buddies, please uh, read your Bibles daily. Otherwise, uh, if you could please like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Bible buddies, until next time. Bye.